I have to start this video with uh, an apology, a correction. In the last video, I showed you this photinia, which the more astute of you would have noticed was wrongly labelled Photinia glabra. In fact, it isn't. It's Photinia glomerata. So I hope that clears up all those worried uh, people watching. Uh, you see, I had in my mind glabrata, and I've sort of conflated the two names. Uh, there isn't such a thing as Photinia glabrata, so I plumped for glabra, which was a mistake. I should have plumped for the glomerata and would have been correct. Anyway, here it is, gorgeous and still with its lovely berries. Bertie seems interested in something. I didn't think there's a squirrel in there. Well, maybe there was at one time. Silly boy. We are towards the end of November and things are hanging on with some lovely colour in this bit of the garden, the top of the autumn border. We've got this amazing hybrid small tree with a fantastic kaleidoscope of colour. This is Psychoparotia. It's changing colours through the season. It's wonderful. It loses some of its leaves, but hangs on to others. And here we have a Sorbus, Sorbus Sargentiana, big bold leaves. And once the leaves have come off, you get these sort of big sticky, sticky buds. A bold small tree, small to medium tree, really. And then finally, what should be a piece de resistance is this hornbeam, which is uh, specially designed to have very good autumn colour. And I think you'll agree it does. This is Carpinus. Rockhampton Red. A small tree again. And right in the background, forming a dirty great tree now, is the lime with the red twigs. Pleasing combination here. Here we have the Hesperanthera with its red flowers, keeping the red theme going below. And here's some more autumn colour. You've got the yellow of the Japanese tree Melotus japonicus and the red of the Stuartia. And in the background is the very tall Schefflera evergreen, of course. Next to it is the tree with the sharp spines on its trunk, Calopanax, which has been flowering away and now burying. It's got these ivy like flowers. And it's rather, they've rather taken on a droop which I don't know that I've seen before, but anyway, they are very droopy at the moment. This is Calopanax 
pictures. Let's come down towards the cedar of Lebanon. More autumn colouring. This is uh, in there is the upright form of the Oriental Beach, Vegas Orientatus, and that's called Iskander. A good autumn colour. Now you may wonder. Why did I put this massively vigorous vine there? Well, I just love the autumn colour and it sort of droops over the, uh, the pathway. And I had thought I was going to grow it in amongst the grey leaves of the eucalyptus, which I cut back to get the juvenile growth as far as possible. But I really love this, this vine, Vitus cognetii. You can see an escaped bit over there. And I don't wonder if it would go right the way to the top of that oak tree. But in the spring, it's chopped almost to the ground. And as long as I do that, I'm hoping It'll keep it in bounds. But what a lovely colour it is. Flowering now, which is a bit strange, is this uh, delightful little camellia, wild camellia, with a rather strange name. Camellia transnocoensis. The characteristic is the most beautiful red new growth. Another tree with looks like excellent autumn colour on the yellow side is this lime. It's a Really, I planted it here because it has the most beautiful, highly scented flowers, Tilia japonica, and it's a form called Ernest Wilson. But this autumn colour is a bonus. Coming in here, you see the beautiful, large, glossy leaves of this Chinese tree, and it's great big white camellia-like flowers. Perhaps the one drawback of this uh, is that it starts flowering in the autumn and can go on for a couple of months. But really the, these flowers, let me just show you one. Fabulous. Enormous great camellia flower. Almost well, six inches across, five inches across. Here's another flower and look at the buds yet to come. So I'm hoping we're going to have a mildish spell here. This is called a polyspora. And it comes from Western China. And I'm afraid I don't know what species it is. As you walk around the garden, sometimes you see a little sort of vignette, a grouping which is rather pleasing to the eye. And here we have the, uh, the spent asters still green, and the lovely seed heads of the ginger, Hidaikium densiflorum, with a sort of orangey green leaves. Coming down past the blue bench and that lovely Acer, 
the weeping cypress and the towering now pine from Mexico, Pinus Montezumi, which I planted in 1984. What I want to show you is this, again, rather towering holly. I planted a row of them again in the 1980s and it's gone right up. But it's an excellent holly, very bold leaf and very good berries. This is a hybrid called Ilex coniana chestnut leaf because the leaves sort of look like a sweet chestnut, Castanea. Splendid bold holly, but the berries do get taken by the birds later when the weather goes cold. Backed by the lovely colours of the incredibly hardy azalea called Northern Lights, which in parentheses my brother in law used to be able to grow in Ottawa in Canada because it can withstand temperatures down to minus 20, which very few azaleas can. And next to it is uh, another very reliable winter flowering camellia, which is called, appropriately enough, snow flurry. No snow and only a little bit of flurry, but my goodness, it is a beauty. Here's another winter camellia, looking rather nice at the moment. A few buds to come still. This is rather optimistically called Christmas Rose. It's normally all over by Christmas, but it's very pretty. Forming quite a large tree now, reaching right up to there, is the Suonymus from China, collected by a friend in the southwest of the country. And it's, it's full of fruit. I was told that uh, you must plant Euonymus in pairs so that you get the best fruiting by cross-pollination, so uh, that's what I've done. And certainly this year, it's been a great success. Our native Euonymus spindle is grown normally for its extremely vivid scarlet autumn colour, but here you've got this lovely, delicate coloration in the leaves. And I think it's really rather splendid and beautiful. Always rather an anxious time when you wonder whether this great big dahlia from Mexico is ever going to flower before the frost. And sure enough, it's beginning to come out. It's funny, the buds look quite small and then suddenly within a day or so, they've opened up. It's a lovely flower. And the mountains of Mexico Delia Tamaulipana.